can we talk about Visby? The sorry, the battle and the skeletons and so on. This is my particular. This is where I saw you first on a on a documentary on um, YouTube. Yeah, and that's also my my special interest. So. Oh, I good. Mean... Oh, good. <laughs> I thought you were about to say, "I'm so bored of talking about." That. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I'm not doing. As much as before, uh, with, with the armors and with the, with the battle, battle of Visby, uh, any longer. <laughs> Could I ask you just to sort of give us a little, you know, just talk a little bit about it and um, and, and tell people listening what we're talking about? Uh, yes, uh, the battle of Visby is the most famous battle in Sweden, I should say, and we was fought in 1361 when the Danish king Valdemar Atterag invaded the island. Uh, he started off down in the south of Sweden and he took Skåne, Blekinge and then the island of Öland and then he, he took Gotland. And the Gotlandic people um, resisted and fought back. So they formed an army of about 2,000 men on Gotland, mostly farmers, but they want to protect their island. And they first tried to stop uh, the invaders down in the southern part of Gotland. Uh, but they couldn't do that, so there was a small battle in Mesterby first. Uh, but they saw that they, they, they couldn't defeat this professional army uh, coming. So they went to Visby, which was a town with a city wall, and hoped for protection and to help from the town of Visby. But this was the farmers. But they didn't get the help. So when uh, Valdemar Atterag and the Danish army came to the city walls of Visby, this uh, army of farmers were standing just outside the wall on flat ground. Uh, and they were not trained uh, at all in fighting. They, they stand there and they, they really wanted to, to protect their island anyway. So there was a kind of slaughter um, and most, most of them died uh, that day. Uh, and after the battle, the gates were opened uh, from Visby and the town had already made an agreement with the Danish king. Mm. So they paid a tax and uh, they could go on with, uh, with their affairs uh, when the Danish king left uh, Gotland uh, uh, weeks later. Uh, and the special thing about the battle was that all those 1800 uh, farmers 1800. that died uh, this day were buried just outside the wall in a mass grave uh, at the convent of Solberga, Solberga Cluster. And in the 1920s, those mass graves were uh, excavated. Um, and then they found armors, and that's there was a word, word news because normally you don't find medieval armor in in, in the graves, but mm. here they found uh, twenty five different kinds of plate armor and uh, two hundred and fifty mail uh, chain mail uh, quaffs. Do yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah and one shirt uh, as well. Cool. So it's a very uh, archaeological um, big interest. Yeah. yeah, I imagine it's almost overwhelming. Is it that number? I mean, you would expect if you're an archaeologist to f and you found, imagine you found a grave with two skeletons in it, with with forensically important, you know, marks on their bone or whatever, and some armor. That would be a, a <laughs> that be several years work probably. I imagine yeah. just. Focusing. So, how how do you possibly deal with eighteen hundred? Have they all been examined and catalogued? Uh, no, and... one of the mass uh, or two of the mass graves um, is not excavated. One is destroyed, uh, and the uh, other one is still still there. Uh, so we don't have all of them, but it's an interesting material um, for the osteologists to have um, material from. So many men dying the same day, yeah. with different ages, and you can look at um, how how their working life had had been like to, with diseases and uh, things like that. So it's interesting in in, in the human way uh, yeah. to to 
see into 1361 what's what was the life like uh, uh, at Gotland by then and, and Sophia what were the main things that you learned you, you mentioned obviously uh, the, the working life of, of 1361 what did you notice from from you know all of that I guess that wealth of, of information that you retrieved from that site I mean diet I guess what kind of diseases did they have um, they were hard working uh, farmers uh, you can see that on the skeletons on, on the bones that they are um, have been working hard uh, but you can also see some diseases and like um, if you if you had broken your leg <laughs> before you could, you could see how they could uh, try to fix it again or not um, so. and you could also see backbones i'm not so good at this in english but the, you can look at the <laughs> backbone uh, spine. the spine uh, to see what um, th that it was really hard working but it's still a lot of um, uh, research on, on on this it's it's just done a small part of it still i would assume and this might be my ignorance that Agriculture in that far north is, is difficult, right? Especially in 1361. Um, yes, it was quite good uh, during the Viking Age and then in the beginning of the medieval times. But then it was harder uh, because it went colder uh, in the beginning of the 13th century. So then it was famine because of the cold um, and also where the Harder times in business, they could now the town of Visby was uh, in charge of, of all the, the business uh, of Gotland. So it was hard for the farmers in the, th in the 14th century from the beginning. And then you had the, the plague in 1350 and then this invasion in 1361. So it was like a was going down, down, down. And after 1361, it was really, really hard life on it sounds like being in britain today <laughs> yes uh, then it was hard because the pirates came in the in the 15th century and sitting on in the castle robbing ev everyone <laughs> uh, and where did they come from um it was baltic pirates um uh, it was swedes and there were germans and you have all all those fleets um doing this, some for their own work but uh, others for um, for for others that, that they were like um, because when you are paid from of someone else to make robbery, <laughs> you could be paid by the crown or, or the king or the queen to, to yeah. yeah. A lot a lot of our naval heroes in the UK are considered pirates in Spain, for example. Yes. It was the same in the Baltic. So <laughs> it's one story when the king of Sweden, um, he sent a fleet to, to Visby and to Gotland to conquer the pirates sitting here on the castle. Uh, and after a few months, the king asked, how is it? How are you doing? Yeah, I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. Then he was feasting with the conqueror on Gotland. And <laughs> Having parties all the time, and they were friends, so <laughs> and got paid from a king, so yeah, perfect. <laughs> Best of both worlds. Yeah. <laughs> so g going back to the skeletons, sorry, I'm gonna, I, I could talk for ten hours just about these. I just find it fascinating. Could you tell us two or three particularly interesting things that were found about about them? Uh, either either things they found with the graves or things they found from the bones. It, it, the most interesting, I think, is 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 the armors. Uh, it's so special, and uh, also why why did they put the armors in 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 the graves? Yeah, uh, there are different theories about that, um, and there are also s some people saying that it was the Danish armors that were buried. Um, but I don't think so. I, th I think these are old armors, maybe made for the, there was a civil war on Gotland in 1288. And by then it was quite um, rich. The, the farmers were quite rich still. And maybe they made armors by then for the civil war. And now they were reusing those old armors for this 
battle mm. in 1361. So I think it was old armors, uh, like 100 years old. And you can see that on the chain mails because they had the, the shape of a square, uh, their square shape. So it's a elder, uh, older type of, of chain mail that, than the Danish army was using in 1361. Uh, so I think it's interesting that, that you could look into those armors and because then you can also go back in time in 1288 yeah. and you have one of the, the one of the armors is a lamellar uh, armor uh, it's a more like viking age or at least 1200 wow. century so it's even older so maybe that was old in 1288 and then was it reused in 1360 yeah yeah it would be like someone going to war now in with a world war ii or even World War One rifle and helmet, right? Yeah, yeah. Fascinating. My understanding from the documentary I watched with you is that um, the two strange things, it's very unusual or unique for them to be found buried with their armour, um, but there were no helmets found. No helmets. So it suggests that... No weapons. That, that maybe because they were easy, you could easily take away the weapons and the helmets, but getting the, getting the mail, mail off would be difficult or something. So what's the thinking? What are the theories about that? Mm. That it was just too old to be bothered with? It was always yeah. no value in it, uh, but maybe there was in the helmets and the swords. Yes, and they were easy. And you could also reuse a helmet to do other iron things. Uh, so I think it's I think it's because they were old, but also maybe rusty and in a bad shape. But then it was also warm. And uh, if the armor is on a body after two or three days in summer heat, uh, it's not easy and not fun to to take it off and you don't want to reuse it. Uh, mm. So maybe they, after the battle, they went into the town where they were welcomed, well, not welcomed, but they had an arrangement. They had a good time and they didn't bother going and getting the armor off until two days later. And then by then it was too late to get them off. The bodies had all swollen up in the sun and they thought, oh, I'll just take the helmets. That's my theory. What do you think? <laughs> yes, some, 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 something like that. But uh, I guess that there was also the soldiers, um, the Danish so soldiers plundered and took what they wanted first. There are also theories that are a lot of plunderings on, on the battlefields and maybe the Gotlanders also uh, took what they wanted. Hmm. We don't know that. The townspeople, you yeah. mean, of the, of, yeah. So it sounds like you talked about the civil wars. Was there some then ill feeling between different parts of Gotland? Was that why they were not let in? Uh, yes, it was bad between the town of Isby and the, uh, and the countryside. Uh, you had like two societies with different laws and you had different um, uh, leaders. Uh, so they were they, okay. they were like two societies living uh, uh, on the same island. Is that, is that the same now? <laughs> I had that, uh, that question in Swedish te television uh, uh, a month ago. Uh, really? Yeah, they made this big um, uh, series with this, the Swedish history all this week and they asked if there are still hard feelings between the countryside and the town and i said in some things yes <laughs> the, <laughs> but maybe it's more an urban thing that you had the urban and the then the yeah. countryside um, like paris and the rest of france <laughs> bit, maybe yes yeah. i'm born in this yeah. but now i'm living on the countryside so i don't know <laughs> wow. You have to be careful what you say. <laughs> yes. Put in both camps. Yes. Married to a farmer, so. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> One last question then about Visby. The, the majority of the skeletons are in are kept in as exhibits in Stockholm Museum. Is that correct? Uh, yes. Most of the armors are in Stockholm, and the bones are in a magazine. Most of them, uh, but we got three armors here on Gotland and we also got some of the uh, skeletons um, especially with the chain mails with the skulls and chain mails and we also have uh, a leg that are cut uh, um, 
cut off with one one blow you cut off both both the bones in, in there yeah that that was the bit i most remember i was telling andrew about it earlier that was the bit i most remembered about that documentary it's so gruesome mm -hmm. that it suggested that one farmer would have had a shield up and the danish or german mercenary just chopped his feet off yes because most of the farmers, they, they had the, the plate armor and they had chainmail on, on, maybe on the heads, but they had no protection at the legs. So it was easy to take the legs. And 70% 70, 70 of the um, injuries is on the legs and in the, fa the wow. faces. Gosh. It, tell, it's a, it paints a gruesome picture, doesn't it? It's very, um, yeah. Um, so my question was, is there, is there some, do people in Gotland want that, want it all back? Or are they happy to have everything in, the majority of it in Stockholm? It's a national interest, so more people are getting to see it in Stockholm. So I think it's both, even if it should be good to have the, the, the most beautiful ones here on, Got on Gotland. Um, but I, I, I think it's good that they are in Stockholm. I, di I didn't think so when I was in there. But <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> uh, nowadays, I, I, I think it's good. And they, now they made a good exhibition about it because that was very poor. Um, they were in the magazines. Um, mm. When I started work at the museum here, then they put them in the magazines in Stockholm. And uh, the exhibition here was very poor as well. It was like rusty things in a behind glass, and you didn't understand what it was. Now we mm. have a whole exhibition about the, the what really happened and about the people that fought this day, and also about uh, their families. And so you get it all in uh, in a narrative. The, yeah, the full the sort of human picture, not just the sort. Of arms and arm a bit yeah. yeah and now nowadays i'm uh, i was fighting by foot uh, in my, when i was young but now i'm riding in my armor because now the horse had to carry me <laughs> for the battle <laughs> <of Lisby. laughs> oh amazing i was going to ask you later for a, for a little photo we could use for our uh, thumbnail for the episode if you've got anything in armor that would be amazing <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah that would be perfect <laughs> yeah i i can fix that